Demon Tossing. I don't know why I picked that title. Uh, in my mind, I see Whack-A-Mole. How many, how many have played Whack-A-Mole? For those who have never played Whack-A-Mole, you don't know what you're missing. <laughs> uh, I always call, sometimes I call it a, a Demon Boplin and stuff like that. But today we're going to look at uh, Jesus, some of his miracles. Casting out demons and things like this. Uh, during that time, when Jesus was a miracle, people were looking for signs. They wanted to see something from God. They wanted. To, uh, they spent uh, 400 years of silence, where God didn't speak to them as He did through the prophets. And they were yearning for that. They were wanting to hear God and to see God. And so they were looking. Even when Jesus hung on the cross, after all the things he did, especially in the last three years of his life, as he hung on the cross, they were saying, prove yourself. Give a miracle. Give a sign. Show us that you are the Son of God, that you are Messiah. They wanted proof. And even today, people want proof. They want, they want proof that Jesus is the Son of God. They want to see miracles and healings and signs and wonders. From physical healings to speaking in tongues. Show us something. Give us some proof. So why did Jesus do miracles? I think scripture is very plain. He, he did miracles to prove that he was Messiah. Remember when he, what he told John the Baptist. Back in Matthew chapter 11, verses 2 through 6. It says, when John, who was in prison, heard about the deeds of Messiah, he sent his disciples to ask him, are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, go back and report to John what you, have, what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. Why did Jesus give that answer? John's wanting to know, are you Messiah? Things aren't happening the way we thought they would. You're not setting up this earthly kingdom. And Jesus responds to John. He says, look at what I've done. He fulfilled prophecy to prove that he was the one sent from God. Isaiah 29, 18. In that day the deaf will hear the words of the scroll, and out of the gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind will see. In chapter 35, verses 5 and 6 of Isaiah. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lamb leap like a deer, the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. And in chapter 61, verse 1, the spirit of the sovereign Yahweh is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. Jesus' actions, his miracles were proof that he was the anointed one, Messiah, sent from God. Next, he and his disciples set out for the next city on his agenda. So as they went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. Jesus developed a habit of going to church, going to synagogue on the Sabbath. For us, it's Sunday. This is what a good, a good Jewish male would do. That is where God expects us to be, with the body on Sundays. Just like a habit that Jesus formed, we need to form that habit in our lives, a consistent habit. To be meeting on the Sabbath, whether we consider Saturday night or Sunday morning the Sabbath, doesn't matter. We need to be doing what God wants us to be doing, meeting together as the body. Now, while he was there, while Jesus was at the synagogue, he would teach, which he did on that Sabbath. It says the people were amazed at his teaching. 
because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. There was something different about the way this man taught. And all the people recognized it. They could tell he was special. They could tell that he was from God. His teaching came not from the rule of the law, but from the love of his heart. He came not to condemn them, but to lead them to true salvation and eternal life. They could hear that. They could sense that. They knew that there was something different about him. And while he was in the synagogue that day, while he was in church that day, a demon controlling a man spoke up. Just then a man in their synagogue, who was possessed by an impure spirit, cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. This, G this demon knew who Jesus was. The Holy One of God, the Messiah, the Son of God, the Son of Man. And this demon was not alone. Notice he said, us. What do you want with us? He also knew what was in store for him sometime down the road, sometime in the future. He says, if you come to destroy us. And notice where he was. He was in church. This demon was in church. In a holy place. In the presence of Jesus, in the presence of God. Even today, we are not immune from Satan. I think some people think that once they become a Christian, they don't have to worry about that. Satan is there. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for us to slip up somewhere, wanting to condemn us before God. As Christians, we are immune to possession. This man was possessed by Satan. But as Christians, we are immune to being possessed by him but not being tempted or attacked or even oppressed. He cannot oppress us. He cannot possess us. He does not have free will in our lives as he did before we accepted Christ because Satan and God cannot live together. As long as we are in God, in Christ, and we have the Holy Spirit living in us, we can never be possessed by Satan. He can tempt us. But as long as we stay under the blood, as we stay in the blood of Christ, he cannot control us. Satan and God cannot live together. When we praise God, Satan must leave. Because God and Satan cannot coexist. With our praises with God, or to God, Satan cannot stay. He has to leave. So whenever you are feeling depressed, whenever you're feeling like everything is falling down around you, take control of your thoughts and begin to praise God. And watch what happens. You may have to begin praising God from your head. I know that I need to do this. But eventually it will move from the head to the heart, and when it comes from the heart, Satan will leave. See, Satan wants us to think that he has total, absolute control over us. But he does not. God created him. He is a created being, a created angel. Satan decided one day that he wanted to be like God, and he wanted to be worshipped. And so he tried to take God's throne. It didn't work. So he came down here. He figures if he can't take God's throne there, he'll take his throne in our lives. The only way to keep him from doing that is to be in Christ. Jesus sternly said, be quiet, come out of him. The impure spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. Demons have to obey God. Satan has to obey God. And we are protected when we have God living in us. And we are living in Him. And notice I said living. Many of us know Him. The demons knew Him. But we must be living in Him. 
He must be living in us. The people were so amazed that they asked each other, what is this? A new teaching? And with authority. He even gives orders to impure spirits, and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. Jesus continued to heal the sick and to cast out demons everywhere he went. He came to show the love of God to mankind and lead us back into a proper relationship with God. He did not come to condemn us because we are already condemned if we are not in Christ. He came to show us the love of the Father and to develop this proper relationship with us so that we can have a proper relationship with the Father. Scripture then says, as soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her by the hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. See, some of the proofs that Jesus did, some of the miracles, were done out in public, where everybody could see. Some were done in a household like this. For just a select few. But no matter what, word about this teacher got out. Even in the home of one of his disciples, Jesus could not find a quiet place for people. They searched him out because they knew that he was from God. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door. They knew that he was there, and so the whole town showed up. He brought to him all the sick people all those that were possessed. Word about this man of God spread. Notice the whole town came to Peter's house in order for Jesus to heal and to drive out demons. And Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons. But he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. He would not allow the demons to speak. Excitement about this man was spreading throughout the entire region. People were expecting and looking for the Messiah. Remember, when he was born, the angels came down and told the shepherds, the Messiah has been born. People knew that the Messiah was on earth. The shepherds went out and they talked about this good news that they heard. But nothing happened the way they thought it should happen. But they still had hope. Maybe. Maybe. After 30 years, maybe this man, this Messiah, will set up the earthly kingdom now. But that was not what Jesus wanted to do. And that was one of the problems in the beginning of his ministry. People expected him to do this, set up this kingdom, a physical kingdom. But he came to set up a spiritual kingdom first. <coughs> he taught them that the kingdom of God was near. He even said the kingdom of God is at hand. Because where he is, is where the kingdom of God is. In the flesh. And he didn't allow the demons to testify to this fact because he had more work to do. He had more people to see. He had much teaching to do. And as you read through scripture, you see that Jesus healed many diseases and demons. This was, this was proof of who he was. He was fulfilling all the scripture. The prophesied that when the Messiah came, that he would do these things. And he was showing them that he was the Son of God. But he had to get his power from his Father. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. We know that Jesus had the habit of going to synagogue, going to church. He had a habit of teaching in church. He also had a habit of prayer, deep prayer. These are two habits, three habits that we need to develop. We need to develop the habit of being together in the body, the habit of being taught and teaching others. We need to develop the habit of prayer. We need to be in the body because we need each other. 
We draw strength from each other. We share with each other our needs, our concerns, but also the things that God has taught us. We learn from each other. That is why he calls us the body. You cannot go it alone. It is impossible to do it alone because you will fail miserably. We need to spend time with the Father in prayer because our ultimate strength to live this Christian life comes through Him, through His Holy Spirit living in us, guiding us, teaching us, convicting us, helping us. When we try it on our own, we will fail. The Holy Spirit living in us is where we get the wisdom and the power to live what we have learned in church and from others. Simon and his companions went to look for him. And when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. Why were they looking for him? We're not told. Probably because they had more people that needed to be healed, more demons to be cast out. Maybe because they were wanting to push the kingdom. See, they're expecting this Messiah. They wanted to raise him up and make him their king so that he would set them free from Roman rule. But Jesus had other divine appointments. So as Jesus replied, let's go somewhere else, to the nearby villages, so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled through Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. What is the why that he came? He says, that is why I have come, to preach the good news. The good news of salvation in all the synagogues and to heal the sick, and to cast out demons. Verses 40 through 40, 40 45 says, Now a leper came to him and fell on his knees, asking for help. If you are willing, you can make me clean. Moved with compassion, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing to be clean. The leprosy left him at once, and he was clean. Jesus is willing to heal anyone who comes to him physically, but especially spiritually. And a lot of times I think he heals spiritually first before he touches the physical. Because it's through the physical that he gets our attention spiritually. Even Paul had problems. Timothy had problems. Sometimes God allows them in order to keep us focused on him. Another thing we need to remember to, again is that he is more interested in our spirit than in our bodies. Our bodies will die. And we will get a new one that will be perfect, just like the one that Jesus had after his resurrection. I'm looking forward to that one. Sometimes the healing doesn't come in your timetable. You have to wait. You have to humble yourself before him. This man came and fell on his knees in front of Jesus, a symbol of total surrender. See, in those days, when a person fell on their knees, I think a lot of times we think just kneeling down and looking up. When they fell on their knees, they bowed their heads. Sometimes they even fell prostrate. They just fell flat down on the ground. A symbol of total surrender. See, in those days, the sword is what they used to kill people. And when you bowed down and you lowered your head, you exposed the back of your neck. You are saying, and this is what soldiers would do. I am submitting to you. Do with me as you want. So when we bow on our knees before, before God. We are, we should be surrendering ourselves to him. But too often, we may bow on our knees, but we're looking up at him, demanding him to do these things. He said, if you are willing, and Jesus says, I am willing. And the man's sickness left him at once. Sometimes ours takes a little longer. We just need to remember that God is in control. And we do not command him to do anything. Immediately, Jesus sent the man away with a very strong warning. He told him, see that you do not say anything to anyone, but go, show yourself to a priest, and bring the offering that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Jesus told the man to do, 
to follow the ritual laws. Go show yourself to a priest. The priest will check you out. If you are clean, then you can offer your sacrifice. This is what he was to do. But the man disobeyed. We don't know if anything happened to him because of his disobedience. But he, he did a good thing even though he disobeyed. It says, but as the man went out, he began to announce it publicly and spread the story widely so that Jesus was no longer able to enter any town openly, but stayed outside in remote places. Still, they kept coming to him from everywhere. Jesus, Yeshua, Messiah, the anointed one from Yahweh God, fulfilled what he came to do. He proved that he was Messiah through all the miracles that he did. Healing the sick, casting out demons. All to prove that he was who he said he was and that he had come to make us into a new creation. One that is now able to have a direct relationship with the Father. As God intended from the very beginning in the Garden of Eden. God had a direct relationship with Adam and Eve. They sinned and separated. In eternity, if we accept the blood of Christ, we will have that same direct relationship with God the Father. While here on earth, we can have that relationship through accepting the blood of Christ and allowing the Holy Spirit to live within us. So the question I want you to think about, do you have that relationship? Is it growing? Take a few.